Brandon, this is awesome because we've got a name who's synonymous with some of the biggest plays in Ole Miss history. And Corey Peterson, a receiver for the Rebs from 1996 to 1999, had 40 catches or more in his final three seasons with Ole Miss. And, and you really know him more for the big moments that he was a part of during his time. Corey, what's going on? Catch us up about uh, what's going on in the world of Corey Peterson. Yeah, no, just uh, uh, living uh, the great life, living my dream in Olive Branch, Mississippi with my family. Uh, took the day off today on vacation to get the house cleaned. Got a, a fellow rebel coming in, John Rahm from uh, Newport Beach, California uh, tonight. And then we're heading down south to uh, Oxford for the game. I thought, you were gonna say to you, I thought you were going to say you took off to do the podcast. We were going to be really appreciative of you to take a full yeah, day off of that. I, I, I left that day. out, but yeah, definitely. <laughs> that was uh, my number one priority today and then vacuum after that. So, <laughs> Well, it's funny because <laughs> a, a staple question we're asking former athletes is, you know, tell us about your favorite memories from your playing days. But with you, it's kind of too hard to pinpoint maybe one memory and we can break down all of those big moments. But you are attached to, to so many of them so many memories of fans that their favorite play might involve you. And, and there's a multitude of them. So my first question is there's no way that you pay to eat when you're back in Oxford, right? No, I mean, it's, Hey, it's been a long time since I've played. So yes. And I'm happy to pay for every, every meal I have. I'm just happy to be back in Oxford and, and with what I do for a living, it, it takes me there about once or twice a week. So uh, I get to see how it changes weekly in this uh, incredible town of of Ox Vegas, Vegas, Mississippi. So you, one of my favorite things before you got on, we were talking. I told Seth, I was like, I'm gonna be a little bit of a fanboy because I was a big, big Corey Peterson fan growing up, and part of the reason I, I was a fan of Ole Miss, you know, back in the day. You had the white gloves and the white cleats, and, and just the whole, you know, just the whole persona of this just. And just dude playing receiver. And it, anyway, it, I just always thought that was really cool. But another reason, as Seth alluded to, was just the big plays. And it felt like there for several seasons, when there needed to be a big play or a big catch, it was 85 making those those plays or catches. And so my question is more of like, what goes into being clutch? Like, what goes into that? It, it, you know, the 97 Egg Bowl, your sophomore season. You know, take us through that specific. That, that's a great kind of one for me because there's the brawl before the game. There's just so much heightened awareness around that game. And then, you know, at the end, you end up getting the two-point conversion to, to win it, which is the biggest play of the game at the very end. Like, walk us through that and, and talk about just, you know, what, what kind of goes into that big play mentality. Well, I mean, that, that game is just uh, – it wasn't the most exciting uh, game. Uh, it was pretty low scoring. We scored on our first drive and then obviously scored touchdown at the very end. Andre Roan catches both touchdowns. And, um, you know, just, just being I – I was a sophomore that year, um, the fight before the game, and, and, and a lot of things um, were happening during that game. I mean, we were first year off probation. Um, and basically if we win that game, we go to a bowl game for the first time in, in a long time. So I know the fans were, were excited about that game and that opportunity state had a great team. We're playing in a, a, a tough environment, fight breaks out before the game. Uh, but I think just in terms of, of, of making plays, the guys that were on that team, the senior leadership, um, the, the great offensive linemen, I mean, obviously, Stuart Patridge is, is one of the greats for Ole Miss um, and, and, and was a gritty and a tough, tough quarterback, kind of in that Brett Favre realm. And uh, we believed in him. Um, coaches believed in us. Great plays were called. And, and it's the guys around you. You know, you don't want to let them down. Uh, and everyone on that, our, our offense, wanted to make that big play. Um, I, I'm glad my my – that play was called. I mean, it didn't necessarily have to go to me with C drive, but uh, I mean, the offensive line just, I mean, they, they held their own, they blitzed, they were coming, just unbelievable blocks if you break it down. And just Stewart uh, throws the perfect pass. And I'm just glad I am lucky that I held on to it. Uh, and the rest is history. Um, and we go to the Motor City Bowl and get a victory. And our program is off and running. Uh, and I was just excited to, 
uh, to be part of that. And can't believe we're still talking about it today. But, uh, hey, uh, always go for two, even if you're Arkansas, if you know what I mean. Oh, my gosh. Wow, throwing that out there now. I, it actually does make me think about <laughs> the current day though because we see lane kiffin go for two a lot go for it on fourth down and from a player's perspective we've heard some of our guys talk about it that you know the defense says they he believes in them whenever he goes for it on fourth down because it's going to be a short field or going for two they have faith they're going to get the job done the way you did in 97 so as a player how much confidence can it give you knowing your coach has faith in you and your teammates going for it in those big moments Oh, a lot of confidence, and, and, and you're seeing that with the teams now with Matt and his accuracy uh, to make the right decision, get the ball to those, those stud receivers we have. And, and if, if something's not open, I mean, he's going to make the right decision, and obviously he's done that third and long and made some huge plays for us to keep the drives going, and that just kills the defense on the other side. So uh, it's fun to watch. It, it really is. It's uh, – it's a new age football and I love it. I, I back it and uh, I'm going crazy, you know, watching on TV or at the game. So you mentioned Roe uh, and, and Patrick, you, you got the ability, you, you had the pleasure of playing with both guys. So I have to know before I ask my next question, who threw the better ball, Stuart Patrick or Roe Miller? You know, they, they both did. Uh, I'll never answer that. I uh, love those guys to death. Uh, uh, Stewart, um, they, I, I tell you, both of them, they threw easy passes to catch, tight spirals, soft passes, very accurate. It, it made our job easy uh, on the receiver side. And I, I think all the, the former receivers that played with those guys would say the same thing, along with Rufus French, who's coming in this weekend. But, um, you know, very, very blessed when, when I think about it to play with Stewart for two years. My, my freshman and sophomore year, um, Romero comes in my junior and senior year. I mean, these guys are huge names and great quarterbacks for, for this university. And then I'll even throw in, hey, redshirt freshman Eli Manning, if you've ever heard of him, coming in. And it's funny to say, hey, I got to catch passes from him in practice. The great one. And, you know, he, he he's just one of the best as well. And um, – so to, to think of, of those three guys, um, man, I pinch myself um, and, and, and it, very blessed um, to be able to play with those guys and, and, and the other guys at, at Ole Miss during my time. So we, we've had Romero on here, actually, and, and he, you know, he's obviously a wealth of knowledge. And we talked about him kind of being that, not that Stewart wasn't a, a more of a modern quarterback, but it seemed like when we got into the, you know, those, those years, the later years of Tuberville, we were throwing the ball more. And so Romero in those years, you know, he's lighting it up. He came from Shannon High School who threw the ball a ton. And then he comes to Ole Miss and gets to kind of throw it around some more and, and just kind of, to me, kind of continued to modernize that position for Ole Miss and not just really Ole Miss, but the SEC is, as it sat at the time, people were starting to throw it more. You know, SEC was always this power running, play defense, you know, conference, and he starts kind of opening that up. But another play that we talked about that we have here is 1998 here in Oxford, overtime. Rowe throws you a, a heave at the goal line. Ball pops up in the air for what I'm sure seemed like an eternity. <laughs> Can you walk us through that? I mean, you 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 look you played it off well, so we may have to give you an Oscar, but you played it off like that was the plan the whole time was to just you know catch the ball laying on your back. You know what? Um, the picture that that one of uh, the photographers that Old Miss got on that is, is unbelievable. Just laying on the ground, and you could see my eyes literally popping out of my head, laying there looking at it. Please come down. Please come down. Uh, there was an instant replay back then, and um, obviously that that game was – we were in overtime. We got the ball first, and um, Roe hit me on a dig, and I, I turned up the field and was thought I saw a window, and boom, right at the goal line, I get popped by two LSU defenders. And, I mean, I don't know if they would have called it a touchdown or a fumble. I, I just don't and will never know, but luckily it came down right on top of me and um that game was crazy i mean it was halloween game 
I think we were up by three touchdowns, maybe going into the fourth quarter and LSU came back and, uh, and we were able to pull it out our defense in overtime, shut them down on some big plays and got us the victory. Cause I think we missed the extra point after we scored, if I remember right. And, uh, you know, a lot of the games that the teams I, I was on is we had a lot of close overtime win at the very end victories. And, and we wanted to make it, uh, I guess, exciting for, for the fans and put them on the edge of the seat with those victories. But, um, yeah, that's a that's a great memory and a and a, and it's sometimes a nightmare that, that what I'm sleeping that I, that I I did fumble it and they got it and I blew it for Ole Miss. So I'm trying to suppress those thoughts. Thanks for reminding me about that yeah. game. Yeah, follow up question. I know your son plays <laughs> plays and uh, is is wearing 85. I've seen a few pictures of him uh, playing football. Are you guys working on the uh, back drill, laying on your back and catching balls in the yard? Is that one? You're <laughs> <laughs> no, not not at all. Uh, uh, but that's a great idea. Maybe we should. Maybe we should try that. The best. <laughs> Were you on a ladder just dropping balls? Like, oh no! If it hits like this, this is how you have to catch it. Yeah, fumbleaya, fumbleruski. Yeah, just focus. That's it. Just focus on, and uh, everything will work out. My follow up <laughs> was going to be that Corey gave us the the secret to having big plays is be on a bunch of teams that go to overtime. That sounds like a, a terrible plan. <laughs> Yeah, no. I mean, look, it's uh, it's it's just the way we were. I mean, we had a bunch of just uh, great, great guys that that loved each other and played well together, and uh, and I think that's a big part of the camaraderie, uh, and why we were able to pull out those those close games. Um, you know, I mean, like the guys now. I mean, we had two games in a row, uh, incredible environments for the Arkansas game, and and last play we get that victory. Uh, and then Tennessee, of course, I mean, both two games in a row, we went right at the end. And I think that uh, is part of it. These guys love each other, coaches, and and they play for each other. And you can see that as a fan. You talked about it a little bit, the you know, with LSU is always a big rival. And obviously State, you know, we talked about the play and the, and the brawl before the game. Was there a team that kind of got you going, that was got your juices going when you stepped out on the field, you knew, like, this is going to be a fight to the very end. I mean, there's obvious ones, but is there one that maybe we're not thinking of that you go, okay, this was, this was a big game for us. Even. You know, yeah. You know. uh, I mean, you got Alabama, of course. Um, unfortunately, uh, the, the years I was there, we were, we were zero and four against them, but my junior year in Tuscaloosa, we came close. I mean, it was a, it was a, it was definitely a fight, and uh, we had opportunities there. And then my senior year at at home, um, we were wearing the navy jerseys, and and we had them right at the end. And and Sean Alexander pulled out an incredible run, kind of just put us away at the end. But but yeah, Alabama, that's that's the one, uh, the one team we wanted to beat. And uh, and then obviously State and LSU. I mean, th those all three of them are, are huge rivalries, and. And we got LSU's number. I mean, we we had three victories in a row my sophomore through my my senior year against them, and that's always fun winning uh, twice in Baton Rouge in that environment. That those are memories you'll never forget. So that answers your question. Yeah, not a lot of teams do that. Not a lot of teams go on and win both of their road matchups uh, in Death Valley. And uh, we're talking a lot about big catches with you, Corey. But another angle is the, the the electric punt returner ability that you had. And I know some fans whose favorite memory of you is that SMU punt return. Uh, what do you remember about that game, the big comeback? And what did you enjoy most about being a return guy? Yeah, no, um, I returned punts in high school and um, just always had, had a knack for, for just trying to make the right decision. And uh, I kid around uh, all the time and, I think I've said it so much that I believe it, and maybe I did, but uh, I led the SEC in fair catches, and uh, <laughs> and I think I've uh, I've said now that uh, I, I led the nation in fair catches. I've said it so much, and uh, it's funny because um, went to the LSU game, and uh, my family and I, and I'm sitting there with my daughter um, Hannah Grace, and she's she's ten, and you know she's watching the game, getting involved, and and. You know, she's heard me say <laughs> that, that I've led the SEC in fair catches. So she started to notice them fair catching in the game. 
uh, Drummond, and she started yelling out. That was one of her favorite parts of the game, or the fair catches, and and then Ole Miss first down, of course, too. But mm-hmm. we bonded during that game. But it, yeah, I, I that's just one of the things that uh, you know. My dad was a baseball player. I played a little bit back uh, back when I was younger, center fielder, and um, just always liked uh, uh, returning punts. And and it's not. It's, it's a nerve wracking thing to do because you're back there by yourself and then you've got 11 guys running down there trying to take your head off. And, um, but to, with that SMU game, you know, I, I had a ton of family there uh, from, from Oklahoma and, and there in, in Dallas. And uh, I fumbled a punt in that game early and um, fumbled it close to the 10 yard line backed up on our side and they scored on the next play. So, so I blew one in that game for sure. Um, and then made up for it a little bit towards the end. But um, if you look at that punt return, I mean, you could have returned that for a touchdown with the blocking on the side with the guys, my teammates put there. Um, uh, you may have looked a little better because it's, I heard people yelling uh, run forest run when I was going down the sideline. So um, I digress there, but um yeah, it's a fun thing to do. I don't, I don't think I could have. Seth, maybe. No, I, I, I was going to say, I've, I've read the quote where you said that you ran a 4 5 40, but the wind was at your back. I don't think I ever broke five. So I, <laughs> I don't think you give yourself enough credit. We're, uh, we're not, uh, we are not the same, Corey. <laughs> the wind was strong that day, my friend, <laughs> uh, in, in Dallas. I promise you. George Costanza. Well, you said you, you at, yeah, you said you were at the game a few weeks ago for LSU and you get down to Oxford a bunch. So you see this current team play a ton and we talked about it with Roe and Brandon hinted at it that he was one of the first quarterbacks here at Ole Miss that could really spread the ball around the yard so I have to wonder how much would you have loved playing in this Kiffin Levy offense four wide uh, whatever it might be and, and and running up the running up some points on the scoreboard well yeah that and um you know Romero in this offense uh, would have been incredible I mean he had the speed he could run and and obviously was one of the better passers in the SEC at the time and you know the offense is what we ran uh, you know a few of us had around 40 catches back then I mean yeah I would have liked to play in this offense we probably would have had uh, 40 catches at five games would have been pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> fantasy football wise too <laughs> but uh that's awesome so I know you keep up with a lot of guys you know following you on social media and whatnot and just every time I've ever talked to you you talk about guys that you still kind of talk to who are some teammates that you kind of keep up with on a regular basis that you know during games you're texting or during the week or whatever so who are just some of those guys that you still kind of try to keep keep tabs on yeah, uh, Romero, definitely. Romero uh, lives here in Olive Branch, and he has his own state farm agency. And um, I'm one of his clients. I always give him a hard time. He never he never picks me up like, uh, you know, Aaron Rodgers or, or Mahomes' agent. But but I'm okay with that. Um, you know, and I see Ro going on a lot of vacations and having a great time with his <laughs> wife, Rhonda. <laughs> and I uh, – I say, Ro, why are my rates going up every time you take a, a vacation? But uh, no, Ro, Ro, for sure. I, I love Ro. And how do you not like the ambassador for oh, Ole Miss, yeah. Romero yeah. Miller? I mean, he is he is just – he's got the charisma, the humor. I, I just love him to death. Um, and, uh, and I'm glad he came to Ole Miss because he was a huge recruit. He had a lot of options. But Ro, uh, for sure. T. Wade, I mean, the lieutenant – of course, keep up with him. Um, I've got a picture of him in my son's room where I'm, I'm giving him the salute um, at the end of one of the games. I think it's one of our bowl games. And uh, I made Cole get up in the morning and salute the lieutenant just like I had to, uh, of <laughs> course. Um, sent him that picture last night, as a, as a matter of fact. But, uh, you know, those guys and, and, and more more guys as well. we got a fantasy football league that a lot of us that play together uh, are in that league. Amzi Williams is, is one of them. He's the commissioner because he's the only one that any of us trust. Um, <laughs> Rose in that as well. <laughs> but uh, no, there, there's more than that. But, uh, you know, been, being 
around um, Oxford and, and living here in Olive Branch and, and just close by, it's, it's been such a blessing. Oxford it, it, and Ole Miss changed, changed my life. And uh, it's, it's really cool to be, be this close and be able to go to the games and, and see a lot of the former teammates that, uh, that I played with. So, Who is winning that fantasy league right now? Well, we go by power ranking, and uh, I, the guy that's in first place, ironically, played at Arkansas, played receiver there, David Thompson, uh, and he's in first place now. But I'm I'm coming there. I'm 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 okay. ranked fourth. That's the the last spot for the playoffs. So I'm coming along. And hey, thank you, you know, thank you, DK Metcalf. I appreciate you, bud. Um, you have put up all kinds of numbers for me uh love your father uh, for <laughs> raising you into a beast that you are so thank you sir we're gonna go get that championship so i can get that dough even with a, even, a nice vacation even with a backup quarterback <laughs> he's still putting up numbers that's nice hey you know what carson wentz has helped me the last couple of weeks and uh, last night too so thank you carson <laughs> appreciate that too so yeah, I love yeah. that you're leading into my next question, too, because you have to take some pride in the lineage of the Ole Miss wide receiver, whether it's your generation going to Chris Collins, Tay Biddle, Mike Espy, Mike Wallace, Dante, AJ, DK, Elijah Moore, two touchdowns last night. And then, of course, yes, the, sir, the crop of guys that we have here now and moving into the future. How much pride do you take take in seeing that lineage develop? Uh, it feels like they just keep coming and it has to be fun to watch for you. Oh, it is. I mean, just the names go on and on. And um, I remember uh, getting to meet Shea Hodge um, when when Matt Luke was the head coach. He brought us all back during one of those spring games that it was like 20 degrees, but brought our families back, uh, going to the indoor facility. Uh, Tom, Luke, you know, I know it was a big part of having all of us come back, and that's a big deal. And 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 with your your family get to see Laquan Treadwell and Chad Kelly and all these guys. But I got to say, you know, Shea Hodge is just one of the great. I mean, there's so many names, but meeting him was really cool for me and having some words with him and uh, and watching these guys in the NFL. I'm a big NFL guy and I, I get that Sunday NFL ticket. So, you know, Sundays it's it's on that red zone channel in the backyard, in the living room, it's, it's chaos around here, but uh, I follow all the guys that have played uh, in the NFL, DK, AJ, you know, Elijah now, and, and a lot of other ones that played at that level. And it's, it's just a treat to, to watch those guys on Sunday. So, but yeah, I mean, what, I mean, it is receiver you, I mean, you can't argue that. I mean, Mike Wall, I mean, the list goes on and on and, and, and guys that, didn't just make it, but made major impacts in the league. It's, that's a huge deal. And uh, seeing those guys on the Jumbotron uh, for the LSU game was real cool, too. That, that was a neat thing to see, see so many players come back for that. Corey, we appreciate the time, certainly. But before we let you go, we, we've got to get just a family update. I know you're a family guy. And, and as, you've, as you've talked about kind of during this interview, just, you know, your, your affinity for your kids and – I know you're. I know, like I said, I know your kid wears a, wears eighty five. But give us an update on the family and the kids and what you guys what you guys do. I mean, what what is what do the Peterson clan do for fun these days? Uh, you know what? Uh, watch football <laughs> pretty much this time of year. I mean, bless my wife. I mean, she she handles it and she's getting into it. Uh, she was on the other end of the spectrum when we were in college. She was an accounting major and um, a, you know, academic scholarship. And what's that? Did you guys meet at Ole Miss? We did. She um, mm -hmm. she's three years younger than me, okay. and she um, she roomed with my sister. They came in the same year and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we work. became Good friends work. and tried out. Yeah, yeah. We didn't date in college, but she uh, she's a special lady. She puts up with me and and football on every night and um she's just a great great lady lady g love her to death but uh we're pretty boring i mean it's football netflix or uh that's it i've got a, a retention <laughs> pond behind my house so we're out there fishing and uh shenanigans uh, behind the house basically i won't go into all that but uh we have a lot of fun and we don't even have to leave the house here at uh, Lake Peterson or, or Lake Dumas, if you know what I'm saying. 
<laughs> do mom sounds like COVID may have been good for you guys then you, you just oh, do yeah, it, it, yeah. Well, nothing it changed. is Not, nothing changed but uh yeah a lot of laughs and and goofing around over at our house uh uh that's what uh we pride ourselves in and ironically uh my kids go to lewisburg um school uh it's right off that that 269 new highway we live on craft road but one exit up is is it's spelled laughter. Uh, it's pronounced lauder, but I refuse to say lauder. So I always say I live one exit from, from laughter road to see if anybody corrects me. And when they do, I go, hey, Corey, you know, it's, it's pronounced lauder. I go, no, it's not like a five-year-old, but, uh, you know, these are all things in my head. I'm trying to suppress the nonsense, but, uh, love it all is well up here. So the doctor tells me <laughs> I'm excited. I know how to get to Corey's house now and I can go up there and watch yeah. Sunday NFL ticket. This has been a, come on. The elaboration has done me some favors. I'll fire up the Traeger. We can fish. We can go get some two tailed crappie, three eyed catfish. We'll have a blast while we're watching <laughs> the football games. I love it. Corey, thank you so much for your time. One of the greatest to ever don the Ole Miss uniform. We appreciate everything. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Appreciate your, your kind words. Enjoy it, fellas. Hotty toddy.